Hello there, uh, friends of the Pavoni world and uh, espresso lovers. This is John Houck, and today I want to go through a variety of generations of the La Pavoni Europicola uh, lever espresso machine and talk mainly about the wiring and the heating of those and how that's changed over the years, including the switches. You can see this one is our, our first uh, uh, generation La Pavoni uh, Europicola. It has a switch that is basically a low and a high switch, and that's one of the things people complained about early on, is there's no way to turn these things off. So you would just uh, unplug it. And so let's go ahead and take a look uh, how this was wired up underneath. I'll go ahead and remove the bottom cover for us. And uh, what you'll see here is um, I haven't drawn the ground wire for many of these, and we'll just kind of ignore that for now. Um, we have uh, two wires coming in, and uh, before we get into that, let me just kind of show you what this heating element looks like, so you can keep that in your mind as we're going through here. Um, inside there are two heating elements in the first uh, uh, generations of the Europicola, and there's an outer heating element and an inner heating element. So one is about 300 watts, the other one was about 700 watts. So if there's power going across these two points right here, you'll have about a 300 watt heater. And if there's power going across here, you'll have about a 700 watt heater. And so um, if you want to heat up the water quickly, use the 700 watt. And if you want to maintain the temperature or just have it be a little cooler for brewing coffee, uh, do it. You would put the switch on minimum and it'd be the 300 watt element. So hopefully that's clear enough. So whenever you look at these uh, boiler flanges from the bottom uh, bottom covers, uh, the, the um, lugs across from each other connect to heating element. And the ones that are closer together are the lower power heating element. And the ones that are further apart are the higher power. So how this works is it takes one leg of the power and runs it to the base of both heaters. And you'll notice that the 300 watt heater is on uh, actually all the time. So what the switch is actually doing is turning the 700 watt heater on and off. So basically just by plugging it in and leaving this off your 300 watt heater is going and then by turning the switch on you're adding the 700 watt heater and that gives you about a thousand watts of heat. And uh, uh, so that's how the generation one back in 1961 system worked. So let's go through the ages here, and uh, this version 1.2, 1.3 just added a sight class to the boiler, nothing happened down below. And then they added a drip tray, which kind of interfered with our switch, but not really, there's still room there. And this is a wonderful switch. What happens here is uh, when you uh, toggle the switch here, then this roller bar right here goes across and makes contact with this plate on this side and this plate on the other side, and so it's a kind of a fun mechanical switch to actually watch and work. Um, uh, Bruce uh, loaned me one of those, and uh, I've been clicking it back and forth a lot. Hopefully I haven't worn it out. All right, so um, 1973, they added an off switch, and if you look here, there's uh, the switch has been changed to a middle position off, and then a, a low and a high, signified by a one and a two. What they did then is they kept the brown wire coming to the two uh, spades of the, um, the two heating elements. And then they ran the blue wire. The, the Now, in terms of wire colors, I'm using my own wire scheme to make it easy to explain. The colors of the wires actually in the units vary all over the place. So I'm just going to stick with this color scheme throughout the ages. The two legs coming in from the AC are brown and blue. So the brown goes to the center of the switch, and when the switch is in the center off, the green and the red receive absolutely no power from the blue. But if you click it on low, uh, then you would run it through the green wire, and it's kind of backwards. Um, and then the, the low power would run power through just the 300 watt element. And if you would switch it to position two, then the power would go to the red wire, which then would be just a 700 watt element. And here is a little bit of a complaint. Then they said this new switch system doesn't allow you to get 1,000 watts. It only allows you to get 700 watts. I hope I'm correct in that. Um, 
somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but basically you either get 300 watts or 700 watts or off, where the previous generations you had 300 watts or 1,000 watts. So moving on in time, we now go to Generation 2 Group Head. And what you're going to see here is this whole ch um, Group Head changes and it's going to become bolted on. And we talked about the differences of group heads on a different video, so we'll just kind of ignore that. But down here below, things stayed exactly the same. Uh, still a center switch, uh, center off, uh, low and high. And that was in 1975-1977. And then we go to 1978, and they changed the switch, but essentially it's exactly the same thing. They just uh, gave a, um, a center position switch with a minimum and maximum position and uh, a light there and essentially the same thing. We've got the, the blue wire running into the center of the switch and then um, uh, green or red giving you uh, uh, 300 watts or 700 watts. Then uh, let's see here. Um, we have a new double switch. Um, so uh, the boiler bottom also is a, a three uh, three bolted boiler bottom. We'll, we'll, um, so it's no longer uh, just kind of screwed in like the, the previous generations were. So um, what I've shown here is again the uh, brown wire going to the two um, the the two uh, heating elements inside. The green going to the 300 and the red going to the 700. And what they've done here is they've created an on-off switch and a low-high switch. So the on-off switch basically takes the brown wire, and if the on-off switch is turned on, it runs the uh, brown wire here to the um, center lug. And then from there, um, I'm sorry, uh, I, I said that wrong. The brown wire here is just to light up the light. So ignore that. The blue wire comes in, and when you turn it on, then the blue wire runs power up to the rock to the AB switch, the low high switch. So then the blue wire here runs either power to the red wire or the green wire. Again, same complaint, uh, 300 or 700 watts, you don't get 1,000 watts. Um, but you can see kind of what they're doing here over the ages. And let's move forward in time here. Um, we added a thermal fuse. So if you look here, they basically put in, and this may not be the exact design of the thermal fuse that uh, they use, but it, 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 it illustrates um, what they've done through the ages. So um, give me a little bit of slack on that. This, there's so many variations, it's hard to keep up. Uh, again, the blue wire goes to the on-off switch, same switch there, low, high, red, green is what I'm using there. But before we run the brown wire uh, to the base ends of the two heating elements, um, we run it through a thermal fuse, so if this uh, uh, boiler overheats, um, it will kill the power. And there are a variety, again, of different types of thermal fuses there. Um, uh, this one is a, a newer, resettable one. That's the only one I've drawn so far, so maybe we'll go back and fix that up. So, uh, let's see, from there we go to um, a single element heater. And this is a big change. This is a huge change for La Pavone. Um, let's go ahead and isolate this. Hopefully this will show us the heating element there. One single heating element. And so now we kind of have an issue of our users are used to having a low high. And so what they did is they left the same switch in. They changed the color to black. I think that signifies that you've got a single, single 1000 watt heating element going through here. Still have a thermal fuse um, for your brown wire. Your blue wire still comes in, gets switched, and we just run the red wire because that's the thousand watt. But if this is switched off, there's nothing there um, for for the green wire, nothing for that to connect to. So what they do is, if this is off, they still have they call this a diode, and I'm not sure exactly how the diode plays there. I would think it'd be a resistor, but they're calling it a diode. Looks like a diode. Um, so it lets only a certain amount of power through. So perhaps maybe the equivalent of 300 watts uh, heat going through because of that diode, and they just soldered that onto the switch. And then if the switch is turned on, then of course you have uh, clean connectivity between these two lugs and you get your full thousand watts. Um, kind of an interesting way of going about it. I know a lot of people complain because uh, uh, they said, uh, um, uh, Le Pavone is uh, cheapening the product here, 
Um, but I think uh, they're giving getting back to the 1,000 watt capable uh, from from Earth times before. So uh, not a bad idea. So then we go 91 to 93. They did a lot of changes. They added the pressure stat or the pressure switch. No longer do we have a low or a high. We just have an on and off. And we have this new pressure pipe here. And what this does is it interrupts the power if the pressure in the boiler is too high. So um, you have the brown wire typically coming to one terminal of the heater. But before it makes it there, it goes through this pressure switch. And the pressure switch, again, will connect these two brown wires if the uh, pressure is low in the boiler. And once the pressure hits, I don't know, 0.75 bar, uh, then the pressure switch will close and uh, turn off the heater. So then what we have here is the switch coming in here, the blue wire going to the switch, and then that going through the thermofuse, which we still have, and then going to the other lug of the heater. And um, so now we have a full 1,000-watt heater uh, still, um, and instead of a low high, we basically have an automatically automatic pressure control system. So that's pretty cool. And that was back in 91 to 93. And then in, um, in uh, 93 to 97, all they really did is they changed the steam pipe. So that doesn't really affect our system down below. And then after 2.5, uh, 2.6, um, they put a new boiler bottom in. And um, uh, so essentially the same kind of system here. Um, uh, just a, a new sheet metal um, uh, boiler base. But again, the same concept here where we've got uh, blue switching power here, brown going through. Uh, they, they actually run it through for the light here, but basically brown goes to the pressure switch. Pressure switch then goes to the heating base of one side. The blue goes through the switch, through the, um, uh, through the thermofuse and then to the other side. And then you can see this white wire here and that white wire there. I, I colored those white because those are essentially just driving a light. And so any wires in here that are driving lights, I, I typically try to keep white um, for whatever reason. Uh, I drew it. I get to choose the colors. Um, and now uh, more today, uh, day's look of um, uh, what um, uh, the bottom looks like is basically essentially the same as um, uh, as what we had in um, in, in version 2.6 and uh, just some changes to the outside with the new group head and um, so um, basically same bottom just changing the group head and so then um, the three point uh, then we went to the Stradivaria I'll get back to the 3.1 pro here in a minute but then we went to the Stradivaria. Uh, we're sticking with the Europeicolas right now. And they changed things up quite a bit in terms of the way the switch works. Uh, first, they moved the switch to the front of the unit, right there. And they basically run both, uh, both switching both the brown and the blue wires um, through the switch. So it's kind of a double safety switch. Then one of the blue goes through the thermal fuse to one leg of the heater. And then the brown goes through the pressure switch to the other leg of the heater, and then they have their LED with the white wires, and, I, and this one I decided to draw the green. This kind of wiring is what they used, and we'll go back to it then, um, to the regular uh, professional um, 3.0, 3.1, which is uh, this unit that we're all happy with, with the green switch. It's essentially the same wiring as the uh, Stradivaria, which is both the, the blue and the brown go to one switch, and then the switch is basically, a, a even though it's a single switch, it's a double pull, double throw. So it connects the brown wires, it connects the blue wires, kind of a little extra safety there. Um, the brown goes through the uh, pressure switch, and the blue goes through the thermal, thermal uh, uh, switch. And uh, there we go. So hopefully that was kind of a fun uh, race through the ages of uh, the different uh, wiring of the... Um, European lever machines and a couple of the pros and hope you guys take care. Bye-bye.